In this video, I'd like to cover the new features that are supported with Data Center EVPN and VXLAN. So let's start with VSX Logical VTAP. This basically supports VTAP high availability. Okay. You have two switches in a rack, you have only one A and one B. So with this, you now have HA, right? High availability. If one switch fails, the tunnel still stays up between rack one and rack two. So with this, we require loopback zero. Okay, these have a unique IPs on every switch. Okay, one one, one two, one three, one four. And loopback zero is basically used for OSPF adjacency or even VGP peering. Okay, the loopback one that is used for logical VTAP termination. Basically, the source and destination tunnel IP. So we will clear a tunnel from two dot one to two dot two or 2.1 to 2.3. These are the tunnel next hops. Basically, if you have a server in rack 1 that's trying to communicate with a server in rack 2, the next hop of that will be 2.2. That's the tunnel next hop. And the spines, they actually have equal cores for the 2.2 IP with two next hops. Both leaf 2A and 2B are connected to spine 1, for example. If the traffic hits spine 1, it will forward to both 2A and 2B. And VXLAN traffic load sharing is typically flow based. So flow 1 will use leaf 2A, will always use leaf 2A, and then flow 2 will use 2B in a stable condition. Of course, if the uplinks change or fail, they will actually reroute automatically. To the available leaf. So in the data center, we recommend A325 as the VSX VTAPs. And these would support southbound VSX lags to the servers to dual home. And of course, it supports both layer 2 and layer 3 EVP and VXLAN. So this VSX logical VTAP will only work with VXLAN EVPN initially. Some additional VSX logical VTAP information. So VSX split recovery should be set to off. And by default, it is on. And we also recommend single home servers to be only connected to the primary VSX switch because the lag interfaces and the subnets on the secondary switch will be shut down in case of a split failure if the ISL breaks between the two switches. For bump traffic, both switches are capable of forwarding it, but it's only forwarded by the switch that receives it first. So if server traffic is sent to 1A, 1A will actually forward it out. And 1B will not forward it out. So that you don't have a loop for bump traffic. Let's cover the VSX logical VTAP failure scenarios next. This is a table. By default, split recovery is on, as I mentioned. We can turn it off. The main benefit of this is because of here. When there is a ISL cut and your keeper life is down, right? Basically, total isolation between two switches. The secondary node will actually bring the logical VTAP back up. So that's not desirable. So we should switch it off, it's recommended to switch it off so that the logical VTAP will stay down on the secondary switch. So that this VTAP IP 2.1 will only stay up on the primary switch if you have a total isolation. ISL and Keep Alive are both down. That's the main reason. I've highlighted those in bold to cover the VXLAN VSX logical VTAP. So these, not in bold, these are typical non VXLAN related, so no change to those. Okay, as you see, if there's uplink failure, there's no impact to the logical VTAP. If there's downlink failure as well, there's no impact. For example, if this downlink to the server, if 1B, this link goes down, there's no impact to this logical VTAP. It'll still stay up. 2.1 will still stay up on both the switches. So that's the recommendation it off right, for 
the ASX logical VCAP. In previous videos, I covered the data center, the XLM EEP and use cases, as well as the tree gateway. In this video, I just like to focus on the main differences with 10.4. As I mentioned, 10.4, we now support the ASX logical VCAPs. Right? We can write the HA. One switch fails, the tunnel will still stay up to the other X. And with 10.4, we now support active gateway on the border leaves. So these the four gateway IPs, they have to be you have to use active gateway. And actually, if you use a standalone switch as your border leaf, you also need to use active gateway. It's also recommended. In 10.4, we also support 8400s as EVPN route reflectors. So 8400 now supports EVPN control plane. But it does not support VXN data plane. So these leaves will still be H325s. The spines could be H325 with the 32 port 40 slash 100 switch. If you require high port density, you could use the 8400. So same thing with the centralized layer 2 gateway. With 10.4, we now add the SX logical VTAP support for the HA to the servers. In this case, with the centralized layer 2 gateway, you do not need active gateway to be configured because the default gateways are on a separate device, like the firewall. And you could use the 8400 again as your route reflector if required. In the previous use cases and slides, I showed IBGP EVPN with OSPF in the zone on port. So in 10.4, we now support EBGP EVPN as well. So we support two flavors. On the left, we have multi AS. EBGP EVPN, that means every rec has its own AS number. So rec 1 would have 6501, rec 2 would have 6502, so on. The spines would be the same AS number, but this is multi AS, right? Different AS numbers. We also support DO AS EBGP EVPN. This requires less AS numbers, just two one for the spines and one for all the leaf switches. So for most of the enterprise customers, we recommend keep it simple, IBGP EVPN with OSPF, especially in multi-port or multi-zone environment. So if you need to plan for multiple zones or multiple ports, and imagine if you use lots of AS numbers within a port, well, you need to burn lots of AS numbers. Right? You need to plan for those. And some vendors, third-party vendors, they only support EBGP, for example, so you're forced to use EBGP EVPN. Just as a general rule of thumb, if you believe there are you more than 50 switches in a zone or a port, we recommend to move away from IBGP EVPN and OSPF and just move to EBGP. As you have seen, it requires small AS number planning. Like the minimal you go for dual AS is basically two per zone. Two AS numbers per zone. But it could also be used as uh, easier to manage or troubleshoot in larger environments. Of course, you, you do not need to use OSPF anymore. Right? Just focus on BGP troubleshooting. So they are both supported. Both AS, multi AS, and dual AS are supported in 10.4. So take note the VSX switches in a rack, if you do intend to use multi AS, they have to be in the same AS number for you to run IBGP. Because two switches in the same AS number run IBGP. So same for dual AS. When you have two switches in the VSX, you need to run IBGP between them. Right? You do not need to run IBGP across the racks, just between your VSX peers. With 10.4, we also support VMware NSXD and A325 integration. This is a very niche use case. In a typical NSXD environment, you have your hypervisors and you build VXN tunnels between them. So that the VMs can communicate through this IP fabric. And with this integration, you can have H325s that communicate with the NSX controller through the OBS DB protocol to dynamically bring up the tunnels between the hardware VTAP and the software hypervisor VTAPs. So that the bare metal server can communicate with the virtual machines on the same subnet. Right, remember, it only provides layer two network connectivity. Let's summarize the 10.4. The excellent EVPN data center use cases. So A325, it supports both static and EVPN for both layer 2 and layer 3 VXLAN. And if you want to do the VSX logical VTAP, it's only supported with EVPN initially. 
we do plan to support HA ESX with static VX land in a future maintenance release. HU25 supports both EBGP and IBGP EVPN. It can also function as a route reflector. The 8400 that supports only the EVPN control plane can support both EBGP EVPN or IBGP EVPN. Of course, the target will be to use it as a route reflector if it is fine. Use cases H two twenty five is supported is recommended for both leaf and spine, for both the centralized layer three and layer two gateways. Eighty four hundred is recommended as spine. For the third use case, only H three twenty five is planned for certification, and we will start certifying it with VMware in ten four. So because eighty four hundred does not support VXLAN, it's not planned for certification. Let's conclude by covering what AOS CX ten dot four supports. Three use cases that I mentioned earlier are supported in the data center for EVP and VXLAN. 10.4 supports EVP and Route Type 2, which is your MAC advertisement route to advertise the MAC addresses between the VCAPs. It also supports EVP and Type 3, inclusive multicast Ethernet tab. IMAP, that's for the bump traffic. It supports IPv4, layer 3 unicast routing in the overlay. It supports IPv4 layer 2 multicast bump traffic in the overlay through hit and replication. IPv4 unicast VTAPs are supported in the underlay. That means you can have IPv6 as your loopback 0, for example, or even loopback 1 for the tunnel source. 10.4 supports a one to one DNI to VLAN mapping. And both DHCP server and DHCP relay are supported on both centralized layer 3 VTAPs. Of course, the extent EVPN should always be recommended for production networks. The extent cannot scale and is prone to CLI errors. So 10 VTAPs maximum as a general rule of thumb, right? You could use static VXLAN, something temporary or small scale. 